Welcome to the business meeting. Uh, Mary and Tenseg and Lakeisha will be here throughout to help with the technology because we have some voting to do. So just so you know, we'll take a moment to pause and at each of those moments and just remind everyone how to use the um, use the technology. But I want to start uh, first with gratitude to the steering committee, to the board for putting together um, an incredible meeting agenda to leading this last year, uh, leading this last three years through a pandemic and through, if, if you listen to Ann uh, Walker's presidential address, through a lot of organizational change. And it's just been a gift to be a part of a team that has grounded and centered uh, shared leadership in a really powerful way to be able to sit in that group and really dive deep and not easy issues, challenges, concerns that our members have. So thank you to the whole team. And I wanna say thank you to uh, Karen Marie Yust, who's really stepped up to embody all the Jedi commitments and lead uh, with the steering committee for an incredible meeting. I hope you are having a great time at this meeting. And to kick us off, I would love for you to put into the chat if you're having a good time. Yes, if the, you're enjoying yourself, we want her to see that this is a good meeting, uh, see the hard work, the labor behind the scenes. So if you can put into the chat, just uh, any good energy you have uh, putting towards uh, this meeting. I wanna ground us first before we jump into the agenda to say, I'm so grateful for all of the uh, members. So we've heard from folks who have been members for an incredibly long time and some who are here for the first time. And we want everyone to know as we get into this business meeting, we have to make uh, votes on officers and approvals that every voice matters, every vote matters. And we're glad you're here. If this is your first time voting, if it's your 40th time voting, we're glad that you are here in the business meeting. And we are gonna be taking nominations from the floor. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it out. We have at least one open position. So start discerning if you have an extra 30 seconds in your schedule next year, because we will take that 30 seconds and add four hours to it. Um, that's the type of service we're looking for. All right. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, let's take a deep breath. 30 seconds of just silence, honor this moment, and uh, then we'll get into this agenda. Thank you all. All right, uh, Mary, can you share the agenda to start with? Absolutely. We have an ambitious agenda to get through. Um, I'm going to try to be mindful of our time and um, move us along uh, to make this uh, happen. But just as an overview flyover, we have regular business. We have a few motions that we have to get through the approval minutes, uh, meeting agenda, that sort of thing. Um, and then we have some reports that we'll hear from that you can look at really and spend some more time with. This agenda is public and on the website, so you can read in depth these reports. And I encourage you to, as members, reach out to those folks who, are who wrote those reports and ask questions, get curious about what the work is and get involved if you like that. Um, we'll talk a little about this annual meeting and then uh, Lakeisha will walk us through bylaws updates um and uh some ceremonial business stuff so that's our that's our time for today y'all ready ready to cruise through this is gonna be a power meeting i don't like long meetings all right all right first we need a, a approval of the agenda can i get a motion to approve the agenda as is see denise Move. Can I get a second? Second by Mark. Any discussion that needs to happen? All in favor. Are we doing raise hands, Mary? Yeah. So, uh, so what what you need to do under reactions, you can find a little green check mark, which would be all in favor, or you can find a little red um, X for no. So, if you can just click on the little, see, people are doing it already. There you go. So if you approve, can we get all the greens? 
Looks like our agenda is approved. If Excellent. You if you can't figure that out, you can always just drop in the comments. Your yes. All right, uh, 2022 minutes. This was the business meeting that Boy Young led last year. Uh, the link is there if you want to read through it. Mary, if you could pull that up. Yep. Hope you all had a chance to look at this or read through it. I know uh, a year old uh, meeting minutes are the most you know, top of your list of things to read in life. If you, uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from last year? I see Tom. Can I get a second? Elizabeth, uh, can any discussion need to happen about this? Any amendments? All right, if you are in favor, uh, hit that little yes. Looks like the minutes from last year are good. Thank you all. Um, the election of slate of nominees. Mary, can you pull this up? Yep. Hold on. Um, I'm going to ask, can I get my tech team behind the scenes to work on clearing reactions? Because I'm not managing that very well. OK. Um, re remind me what you're asking me to pull up the slate the slate sorry <laughs> i'm gonna drop the link into sort of those who this isn't big enough let me yeah drop this into the chat so take a moment to look at the slate of officers we're gonna have to vote i'll give you a couple minutes to just kind of peruse through that link that i provided here uh, so you don't have to watch uh, Mary and she doesn't have to uh, anticipate how fast you can read or look through this. So spend a, just a couple minutes looking through this and then we'll call for a vote on this. You'll have um, several options. We also will need to take a uh, nominations from the floor. Um, Keisha, do you want to say what position we're looking for for that nomination? Um, sure. Thank you. Um, let me, I'm, I'm pulling it up on my end as, as, as well so I can remember, but for the most part, I think it's for as a member for the Harper Warnham Committee. Um, so that committee is a, is, is a little bit in, in flux just because of, um, of, the, of the pandemic and, and things that have shifted and changed. So we're looking for uh, one member and so we're more than welcome to take um, that from the floor. Again, they're still in flux. So they're coming back, planning on coming back strong so that we can again start to offer our Harper and Warnham uh, grant um, and it's a four-year uh, commitment. Uh, so usually you come in your first year, you stay on three year, and then you end up being the chair in your fourth year. So this is um, kind of a longer commitment, but um, it's really focused most so on just the grant and reading proposals for the Warren Immigration Innovation Grants and or recommending people for the Harper Award. So um, that's that's generally the the ask. And there's some great people already on that committee, like uh, Josh Lundy Whitler will be the chair. Uh, Elizabeth Noland, uh, Montauk Williams, uh, and Bert uh, Rubin are on that committee right now. So you have great people on the committee if, if that's something you want to be a part of and you would have time to learn before you were just pushed into chair. So so I first want to open it up for nominations from the floor. So for any of the positions that are open, um, that or for any of the positions that you see on that slate, um, and in particular, the Harper Warnham Committee, if we can get a nomination from the floor, it's a cool group. You get to give an award. You get to give away money. That's like the coolest. You don't have to like look at the finances with Denise and, you know, scratch lines of in the ledger. This is a this is a fun thing. And uh, Lakeisha was a Warnham or Harper Warnham Award winner. So, you know, uh, if you'd like to be, we would love to take a nomination from the floor. So you can speak it in, take yourself off mute, um, or just put your name in the chat. Thank you, Tom. We have a self nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Dr. Tom. 
Don't call me Dr. Tom. I can't get it off. <laughs> All right. Um, are there any other nominations that we want to take from the floor? Ten seconds and add that uh, your name to the slate um, that we'll vote on. Mary, do you want to walk us through what's going to happen uh, next on the technology side? Right. So um, as we get the slate, as we get that added to the slate, there's, we're going to put up a poll. Um, I'm going to ask um, tech team to tell me when I'm ready to put up the poll, and it'll be a ballot. And you're going to have to vote for each in each category. Um, you can also abstain in a particular category if you want, but it won't let you submit until you've gone down the whole list. Um, and so once everybody or a majority of people, because we'll get a percentage, it's anonymous, we won't know who's voting. Um, once we get a majority for the quorum, then we can report the results. Um, so the ballot is ready. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up on Lakeisha's thing just to talk about um, process. I see that the um, she wrote me just to say a little bit about the process, how we got this nomination. There's a nominations committee. The current president chairs that committee. We met in uh, twice. Um, then we continue to meet asynchronously to take nominations. We sent out an e, uh, e news uh, seeking nominations, been on our website. So the Slate has been a combination of direct ask and uh, broader um, out to the broader membership. So if you've ever wanted to be in next year, you know, uh, hit up Anne, who will be chairing it up next year, and say, um, you know, I I, I want to be involved and I want to be a I want to be in some sort of committee work. All right, I think we're ready to vote. Okay, Eric, is there anything that needs to be said? No, um, Patrick, when the vote is done, I'll send you the results. And okay. Here goes the poll. Lakeisha, yeah, please. So you should you should be seeing it showing up in front of you on your screen, and you should be able to start voting. Can people see it? Okay, good. Um, I'm not actually seeing any votes showing up. Has anybody submitted? I, no. be, I began and the poll went away. Okay, there it came back. It it, okay. it went away. Yay. Okay. So it tells me that three of eight has answered. And so can I submit now? Okay, Eric, you're muted. I can't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry. I'm I'm saying to the co-hosts, please don't touch that window. And to everybody mm -hmm. else who's voting, yes, you have to go through all of the um, sections and then you have to click submit at the end. But the only one who should end the poll is Mary. Let her do that um, to the co-hosts. But I'm beginning to see people. So that, I mean, seeing participation going up. So some some people are being successful. And should we submit once we've answered all eight? Yes. Yes, please do. We're at 62% participation at the moment. Going upward, clicking to 70, 82. The submit button at the bottom, the very end of the poll. So, and if it, if it doesn't go away, it means you haven't answered all the questions. Only two people who, only one more to go. <laughs> well, Mary, think, you may, I don't know who the one I person I think I can close it now because we're well above the quorum. There we go, 100%, yay. Um, okay, then hang on, let me get the results. Yeah, I don't want to touch that window, Eric, right? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. This is one of the joys of trying to understand as volunteers how to make some of these more specialized parts of Zoom work. Um, but I think we're getting there. 
this will take a few minutes. You can go on until this is done. Okay. But did I mess up by moving it, Eric? No, you can you can move it. Just don't. Okay. You can even close that window, Mary. So, Patrick, would you like me to put the agenda page up again? Or that'd do you want to just work with it? Yeah, if you could put the agenda page up, that'd be great. So if we're at 100% voting, and Eric, if you can send that to Lakeisha and ourself, that shows up. We'll give you the results of that later on in the agenda. Um, so we can uh, fill that out. Lakeisha will be working on that while we get there. But thank you. Uh, thank you for voting um, and getting that through. The next uh, piece on the agenda is our budget report. So Denise, it's all you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I'm going to trust that people have had an opportunity to look at the balance sheet and the profit and loss sheet. So if you have questions about either of those, those please, are links there. Feel free to, yes, feel free to uh, jump right in and ask those questions as we as we're moving through this. Uh, Mary, if you would put up the budget, please. Uh, and of course, now I'm going to see if I can make it bigger. Sure. Thank you. Huh. This is. Mm. I've also linked the uh, spreadsheets in the chat for those who are looking for it. Yeah, I think maybe. Uh, maybe that would be upper right corner and click on the three dots. You could select read. Okay, that's not what I'm trying to do. Sorry. Um, I, what I what I need. Um, okay, hold on just a second. I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to go to the actual piece because I think I can um think I can do that better that way and while we're waiting for that if you did have questions about the balance sheet or the profit and loss statement I would be happy to respond to those essentially the balance sheet shows that we have a healthy um uh, resource of assets in our uh, various investment funds and bank accounts. The profit and loss statement is very similar to what you're going to see on the budget itself when you when we're able to look at the January to April actuals toward our budget for 2023. So I think we're getting there. If we if I can move. <clears throat> Problem is, there we go. It's very slow. Does is that? No, well, it's great. Thank you. And if we could just go back up to the top, I think we're almost at the top. If we aren't, yeah, we must be there. Okay. So what you see here is a standard um, income and expense. Um, you'll see. Uh, first, let's look at column M, which is about the middle of the page. We're looking at M and we're just noting where we are toward the budget for this year. And this, this column gives you a sense of toward this 2023 budget, how much of those funds have been spent. And because we are at April, still early in the year before our annual meeting, a fair amount of what we will spend for the year hasn't been spent yet. Um, we also have the fall gathering, which will require some resources. There's some things that are gonna happen yet this year. So that number is fairly low on both sides. What I will note, and thank you, Mary, for moving that up. You can see the things that are in, oops. Uh, if you go back down just a little bit, um, I wanna show the journal amounts. The journal amounts do come in early in the year. So on the income side, every year we tend to have a fairly healthy early in the year injection of capital which makes it easy for us to cover our expenses at a time prior to when we get like membership renewals and things like that, which typically happens around the time of the annual meeting. Um, I can have you continue to scroll down so you can see total income about the middle of the page now is 76,365 toward a budgeted amount of 162,131. And then let's just scroll through those expenses. 
uh, nothing aberrant in the expenses. It's about what we would expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep on. Keep on keeping on. There we go. Uh, so you can see the, um, uh, if you'll just continue to scroll, you can see some money has already been dispersed for the regional gatherings. Um, the amount that's listed in audiovisual is live translation for the annual meeting. We're grateful that that can be possible. And then uh, personnel, um, which we would expect by this time of year. So uh, we have spent 26602 toward our budgeted amount of 160 195 And as you can see, we budgeted an overage. So that's, that's what's there. Now, um, I want to stop and, and explain a little bit. So Mary, while I'm doing this, if you'd move us all the way back to the top. Um, there is um, a, a, a disalignment um, a little bit between our typical year uh, when we are spending this money, which goes from January to December. Our fiscal year is the same as the calendar year. And the time of the year when we approve this budget, which is, as you know, now here in July. So we're not even halfway through or just halfway through 2023. And the Finance Committee and I, and let me just say Tony Brain and Alameda Wright um, are fabulous and I'm so grateful for the support that they provide as we think together about this budget. Um, the three of us get together in <laughs> April <laughs> and try to envision the future that's more than uh, six months away um, and then project this budget for 2024. And there's just an awful lot we don't know yet, but there are a few things we do and we do use the benchmark from 2022 that gives us some indication of income and expense, and we also rely on where we are to date. So having had a chance to see the 2023 uh, budget and expenditures to date, are there any questions related to that? Okay, so I'm going to keep going. And if you've got a burning question, please feel free to put it in the chat. I've been monitoring mm -hmm. the chat. So it's the responsibility of the Finance Committee, um, which I have a partnership with, uh, to create this budget for 2024. Um, and so here's what we've come up with. The um, You can see the um, line that refers to contributions is about the same as it has been. The journal amounts are about the same, although we have taken in slightly less than we have projected the last couple of years. And we believe that's been because of COVID and impact of COVID. So we are hopeful that in 2024, we'll be far enough away from COVID that that number will bounce back a little bit. So we have allowed it to stay a little higher than what we've seen in actual. Uh, membership dues, again, um, we've allowed to stay a little higher than what we have seen to be actual because we believe that those numbers will bounce back. Uh, the conference section is an in and out. So if the if the entry on the income side is there, there's an offsetting expense side um, amount. the The annual meeting is a wash. Um, it's paid for entirely by member. Um, dues and registrations and um, fees, essentially. The one place we have not um, balanced that is with this 15,000 in conference registrations. The conference, the annual meeting is not automatically at no cost. Um, we have historically had a, a fee for that and that's why it's budgeted here. So we've left that there. I'm anticipating a day when someday we probably will, yet again, um, have an annual meeting for which there is a fee. And that may be next year, and it may not, but it is the responsibility of a body larger than the Finance Committee to make that decision. So that amount is still there. The draw on endowment. 
Um, we recommend a 4% draw, even though the 5% is what the uh, is listed on the far left. And we've stuck with that 4% draw just to ensure that we're not overspending our, um, our investments. Um, you can see the horizons royalties, total income, 123,234, which sounds like a lot less than the previous year. That's simply because we know that our 2024 annual meeting will not be in person. So we've removed those amounts that would have offsetting income and expense side um, entries. We've just removed those so that the budget is not inflated. So 123,234 is in the range of what we might actually expect. On the expense side, um, you can see most of these numbers are the same as they were last year, and most of them uh, can be reflected in what you see there um, in the actual, much of what we have uh, would typically spend on just hasn't happened yet by the end of April in 2023, so there's not a lot to compare with. There's one line I'd like to note, and that is where we used to include in our budget, travel grants for students, um, we initially removed but have re-added at the recommendation of the board an amount for student engagement over the course of the year. And that's, um, last year it was used for a meal that students gathered for at the fall gathering. And so just wanna continue to support students with that amount um, in the budget. Association advancement, you can see the uh, lines listed there, the uh, Warnham Innovation Grant, um, $3,500 we have to give away. Um, Professional Society Networking is our meeting at the uh, AAR gathering. The board retreat amount uh, reflects um, the, the DoorDash gift card the board members receive to cover some of our meals when we're locked in session all day. Patrick, who forces us not to even get out of our chairs. He's an awful task person. <laughs> not really. He's fabulous. Um, the membership management software, this section relates to website upgrades. So the $10,000 that's budgeted there in 2023, and again in 2024, reflects the amount that we have contracted for website upgrades. Um, our website is it's several years old and it's time for it to be upgraded. And that's the, that's the reflection of the due diligence of the board to find the best uh, deal we can with capable uh, individuals who can up, upgrade our website. Uh, the uh, web management support is an amount that will continue. And with the, with the turn of the year, there will be a slight increase in the cost of the web management. So grateful to the, to the folks who make that happen. Um, and the, the bottom line amount on that uh, is roughly the same as last year. You can see the annual meeting numbers, program and regional gatherings are budgeted. We've removed those placeholder amounts for meeting space and catering, lodging and meals because we are not gonna be in person next year. We know that already. Uh, prior years that had stayed in the budget because we maybe were gonna still be in person. You can see the final section here, which reflects the um, staff. Uh, we did increase, uh, recommend an increase again uh, this year for um, REA and journal staff. 7%, uh, which is comparable to uh, the COLA increase for, for um, Social Security and other federal uh, compensation. So that takes us to um, the bottom line, which reflects that we have a slight overage of income over expenses. And that is the work of your finance committee this year. I would welcome questions. Anyone have anything they're curious about, would like to understand better, um, would like to challenge or, or uh, know more about? 
I understand the value of doing this online, but is there a reason why we're not doing it in person in 2024? We had voted to not do it in person prior to this year even. When we, when we chose this theme, we needed to decide it would not be in person. Someone else who's uh, board related can better answer that question. Yeah, Tom, it's a great uh, question. One of the things that we ran into very early on in this uh, transition to Karen Marie taking on uh, this year's proposal was the decision whether or not, with the uh, changing what was happening with COVID at the time and all that, uh, whether or not it was going to be in person for this, this annual meeting. And it happened so late for us to make that call that we didn't feel confident in the planning, being able to set uh, the next planning committee up well to know whether it's in person or not, or to feel that that kind of pressure on their shoulders with everything that was still happening. So we elected as a board to, you know, just make the call on 2024 early so we can plan an online gathering and give that next, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, proposals, uh, conference proposals coming forward um, for 2025 around how that we can have a little more lead time so they can think about you know, do we want to do this in person, have a conversation with the steering committee and have a little more time to do some strategic planning around that in ways that we just didn't, we didn't feel comfortable at the, at the beginning of this year doing, going through another process like we did with Karen Marie. Um, are we in person? Are we not? You know, how, when are we going to make it? Who makes that decision? So as a board, we just, we move forward to, to set that up well. Does that answer your question? does uh just a suggestion greenville south carolina is a great place to have a conference <laughs> dinner at tom's house that's right <laughs> we can make that happen <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that gracious offer Thank you to the uh, finance committee um, for putting all this together denise thank you for leading all this and just want to say uh, thank you to the board as well. You'll see this note in the uh, piece, given the level of changes and in, in, um, challenges that the, the staff, um, Lakeisha, Chris, Joyce, and Mary have had to deal with over the last couple of years, the board recommended one-time COVID, you know, bonus payment of $1,000. So for their going above and beyond, which again, we're, they're given so many more, so much more than what we could ever pay for or ask for. So thank you to, to the board for making that recommendation and making that happen. Um, Denise, you're next again on the 2024 uh, proposed budget. Um, oh, sorry. That was what we, we just need to vote, yeah, we just, right? We just, we just did it all at once. We need to pull it back up. Is there anything that anyone needs to talk about the, in terms of the proposed budget for 2024? There was a hand raised earlier um, Paulette, and then she put it down. Did you still have a question? Yes, I did. I was just curious, uh, Paulette Isaac Savage, University of Missouri, St. Louis. I was just curious if uh, this final decision has been made not to um, charge or have a registration fee for our online virtual conference next year. That decision hasn't been made yet, Paulette. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. Well, let me just put it out there. So I have attended other virtual conferences where we still do have a registration fee. And so as I look at uh, what Denise just presented, it just made me think that maybe that's something we might want to think about. Of course, nothing exorbitant, um, you know, some something nominal, uh, I think would be beneficial. So I just want to throw that out there as a thought that I was thinking about. Appreciate it, Paulette. You know, when we get to the uh, part of the agenda where we talk about next year's meeting, you'll see our organizers who will also be negotiating with the steering committee around how to approach the board on what that structure might be. And if you have energy and insight around that and how other guilt of doing, I'm sure that that'll be welcome and their contact information will be up as we as we get to that. So we want to take a vote on the 2024 proposed budget. Um, that's going to be uh, sh uh, showing up here. We yep. need we need a motion. Sorry. Sorry. That's my bad. It comes from the finance committee. So it's, it doesn't require a motion or a second. Great. Let's take that vote then. Okay. Hold on just a second. Here goes the, you should see it in front of you now. I hope a poll for the budget. The clicks are coming fast. The numbers are going up 79%, 82%. Yeah. 
88%. We're, we, 91%. <laughs> Three more people need to vote. But actually, it's way more than a quorum at this point, Patrick. So Great. Well, then the budget passes. Uh, thank you, Denise. And thank you to the Finance Committee for doing that, uh, doing your due diligence and hard work. Um, we have a series of reports that we want to get through here. I'm, I'm going to suggest something here. The um, links I'm going to add into the chat. I would love for everyone to spend some time reading them rather than have the folks who spent a good amount of time writing them regurgitate exactly what they're said. I'm going to invite each one of them to give us the headline, something they want you to pay attention to. And then we're going to continue on with our agenda because the reports are written ahead of time for you to read them. So I'm going to invite Hoffman first. Is he on this call? I didn't see him. I don't see him on here. So read that report. It's the um, Horizons Journal. I mean, the Horizons uh, publication, I'll put it in the chat. Actually, that link will take you to all the reports. The journal report, is Joyce on this call? No, Joyce, all right. Mm. We get to just keep making y'all read. <laughs> um, let me put that in the chat here for those who can't find it. Sorry about the cat. <laughs> Jedi officer. I know Chris is here. Chris, you want to speak into this? Yes. Hi, I'm Chris, Christine Hong. Nice to see you all. Um, wonderful conference. I just want to make some highlights based on the report that you see before you. Um, I want to highlight first that um, for this first year, as we approached everything through a Jedi lens, we approached it through a system and structure model. Um, to make sure that we have firm ground for anything that emerges from that that might be programmatic for the future. Um, the way that we did that um, is through number one, uh, REA code of conduct that we'll actually take a look at tomorrow during the advisory council and you can help kind of finesse that and make it great. Um, and what's unique about our code of conduct that is different from other codes of conducts that are out there that it is not punitive. So it is not just a list of don't, 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 and no, no, no. It's a list of why. So because we're educators, there are rationales and um, deep engagements of why we lift up human dignity, why we are anti-violence, and um, the way in which we address breaches of the code of conduct is through a restorative process called the circle process which engages everybody that wants to be engaged and needs to be engaged. So it's it's a response to how we wanna to live together. So I'm excited to dig deeper into that with you at the advisory council, should you be there. I also wanna highlight that um, we have made a perspectival change uh, within our guild, and that's a system and structure thing as well. So although we have known for a long time that we are a global organization and we have a global membership, we have not always functioned as if we are. We have always kind of functioned out of this, the primacy of the North American context, culture, perspectives, et cetera, and even a very Christian perspective. Um, and so part of making this shift is to change the ways in which we engage each other to widen and deepen that lens towards our global membership, which already exists among us. So the online meetings, um, that's one of the main reasons why we wanna highlight that this meeting in this way um, really pushes forward our, our commitments and values towards equity. Because number one, reduces our carbon footprint um, for climate disaster, which is already here. It is not no longer being held off. Second, these online gatherings are accessible to, to most of our membership, um, especially in the overall cost of travel these days, but also many people who are practitioners and scholars no longer have access um, to funds for additional travel beyond one, maybe one meeting a year. Um, students also have a greater ability to be able to access our conference by not having to pay out of pocket and to come in this way. Um, and also we can do it in multiple different time zones. So we can have everybody access uh, the conference at a time that is 
mostly convenient for them. And we get to see each other across the world. And I hope you really felt the impact of how beautiful that is. I know that I have. So we're also pri prioritizing moving towards a multilingual guild. So you saw a little bit of that this time where we used Korean and Spanish live translators to translate plenaries. Technology is amazing. It's always advancing. And so next year, you're going to see probably more advancements because it moves faster than we can even learn it. Um, so I'm very excited about that as well. Um, Multi-religious focus is something that we really want to focus on system systematically and structurally as part of REA. So again, this implicit kind of undergirding of U.S. Christian perspectives. Um, to how do we really interrogate that and make this a space where it's not just um, North American Christians' perspectives and other perspectives, but truly a really global and multi-religious space. I also wanna highlight the regional gatherings that we did this year as a response to the feedback that we got about the loss of face-to-face -face time that we experienced and the grief that we have around that when we do the online space. So I wanna encourage everybody that when we do regional gatherings in the future to sign up for that and to make that something that um, is a priority for you so that you can see each other face-to-face -face and we wanna make that possible for you. So that is my report. I thank you for your support and also just your work towards this as part of our community here. Thanks, Patrick. Any questions? One thing I wanna highlight with uh, the JEDI commitments, the advisory council is where you can get involved in this. This is not a Christine Hong writing all this and just leading uh, the whole guild in this way. It's been an invitational and uh, communal process from the very beginning. So that advisory council meeting is is the way to get involved. That's how we generated all this work from last year's advisory council meeting. How you join the adv advisory committee is you show up and then you're counted amongst its members for a full year. So for those students who need some CV lines, it's a quick way to get some. So just I'm throwing that out there. All and it, right. doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we like, you know, hunt you down or anything like that. It's, it really, it really is like you're there as a, a, an accountability, right, for the work that we're doing. Thank you, Christine. So uh, I see a hand. Um, well, do you want to go ahead? Yes, I just wanted to ask a question in connection with this report. It has to do with the uh, annual meeting, whether it's virtual or in-person or hybrid. Um, it seems to me the, the no, not only the uh, potential for <clears throat> a widespread worldwide attendance, uh, the, the matter of uh, actual numbers of attendance is also important to keep in mind. Uh, it could well be we have an international uh, membership, but if, uh, for example, at the present time, uh, the largest number I saw was somewhere in terms of actual attendance at this uh, conference is about between 50 and 60, that was the highest. But right now we have 38 attending the uh, annual general meeting. And I'm not sure that that, uh, although the people attending may be from uh, multiple places in the world and in individual countries, I'm not sure that it actually reflects the actual membership. Although I'll wait for that report to find out just what the membership is at the present time. But I just wanted to express that concern from my point of view. I appreciate the expression. One of the ways that I'm just gonna encourage you to show up is to come to the advisory uh, council meeting to be a part of those discussions or go on long-term. Uh, you know, as we think about these commitments, that's where that work will take place. And we want that to happen there and not just be kind of a public statement around how this work goes. We wanna see what that actually looks like and what we need from the membership in terms of labor to make this type of uh, change happen. So I encourage you to show up to the advisory council uh, meeting and thank you for, for the comment as well. Um, well. We wanna move on. I wanna make sure that we uh, get through this agenda. And I have an invitation first that I want everyone to take themselves off mute collectively. 
And just know this is the last networking committee report from Mary Hess. So can we just give her an applause? We're going to spend another time celebrate her again. But give her applause because this is going to be the last. Yeah, Mary. I don't want to thank, thank you, Mary. About this. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Hey, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we can hear from um, I want to note in my report, Noel, this might be useful for you. Um, every year, every actually twice a year, I make a report um, that tracks a lot of the numbers, um, and not just in terms of membership, but also followers on various kinds of social media. Um, and uh, one of the things that's intriguing to me is that our numbers are actually staying fairly stable. And I think that's partly because we have gotten a lot of new um, blood, so to speak, a lot of new participation because of the way in which we made it possible for people um, to have a trial membership for a year, um, to see what the organization was about, to participate in these kinds of online spaces. Um, so there's information about that in the report. Um, I'm super grateful for the time I've spent with this organization in this role. Obviously, I've had different roles over the years, and I'm not going away from REA, I'm just handing over this role um, to somebody who has more gifts and capacity for the time we're living in. Um, I got involved with REA before we had a website. I fought really hard for us to have a website. Now we have a website, <laughs> but now we're also doing um, live interpretation and other kinds of things. And um, there's a whole new um, growing edge of folk who really know those things even better, right? And so it's time for somebody else to step into this role. Um, but I want to note over and over again, even just in the last couple of days, all that I've heard from people, which is part of what the networking coordinator does, right? I go to all the meetings, I listen carefully, I try to connect people. There's a lot of um, really positive stuff that's being said. Uh, and some of it comes from having to deal with hard stuff. Right, like I loved what Ann Walker, our president, did in the presidential pl plenary. We name the hard things, we name where we've messed up, and then we walk forward. And we're creative about how we walk forward. And I think that one of the things I want to urge you all to think about um, in future, as I say goodbye to this role, is as hard as it is to let go of some of the in-person all together in an annual meeting stuff has been, a lot of other really wonderful stuff is starting to emerge. And we are creative pedagogues. We can figure out how to build the kind of relational stuff we've done there into these spaces and in that way lead some of the other um, associations and guilds. Um, so anyway, uh, just thank you and look forward to all the new stuff that's gonna emerge. Thank you, Mary. One more time, off mute. Give her a round of applause. We're going to say thank you again, Mary. We love you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank, thank you, Mary. Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Applauding for this. <clears throat> All right, next on our agenda is Lakeisha, Executive Secretary Report. Oh. Thanks. Of course, and I got to follow that. Um, again, I'm still in deep denial. I'm I don't want to think about it right now <laughs> about Mary Nago. Um, I'm I'm really excited for for Esther. I'm I'm also just still don't want to think about Mary leaving. <laughs> all right, so uh, executive secretary report. So I have been your executive secretary for all of three years, believe it or not. Uh, and in that time, I also had a whole baby. So I um, am grateful for you all and uh, for your um, time with me. And now looking at my now one year old. I mean, not right now because he's sleep, but just in general, thinking about all of this, I'm just grateful um, for for everything that's been there. So as you can see the things in the in the in the report, I think the things I really just want to highlight are we had a, a large number of withdrawals this year, um, people that submitted, but then either they couldn't finish the writing or they couldn't finish the paper, or the poster uh, much larger than we I think we've had for, for a long time. And I just think um, some of the feedback was that people are just exhausted. 
uh, they didn't have the time, the energy. I think also because the shift in us, us having a meeting in July as opposed to November, a lot of our deadlines also run up with the end of the semester and run up with a lot of different things. So I just think those are things for us to keep in mind um, uh, as we're as we're making plans is, is how we can think about people's capacity um, in, in, in doing this work. So I just wanna really note that um, you can see the, the information about annual meetings um, and my thing is, I will say, uh, I know someone mentioned earlier, like when we start making these decisions about if they're online or not, I want us to make the decision whether it's online, in person, as soon as humanly possible, so that then I can make the plans, whether it's in person, hybrid, or or online, because I have to, you know, make all the reservations and do all of that. So I do push to make these decisions as soon as possible. So they were making decisions based on when that time was given, but I need as much lead time to get all the things in place. So um, I will continue to push for that, so I can always make sure we have things over prepared. Um, whatever the decision is from the board, I just want to enact it in the best way possible. So that's that's also part of the push there. Um, again, you'll see a lot of the, uh, the other information there. Uh, the biggest thing is I, I love to keep up with the things that the, the board has been doing. You can see they've been changing bylaws, they've been hiring people, they've been, uh, they conducted the uh, staff evaluation. So because it was my third year, this past year we had a committee that did my evaluation, they did the evaluation for the networking coordinator position, and you can see their recommendations there. So we actually got a committee of members that uh, that did feedback forms and then surveys that went out to all of our membership on how we've been doing in our positions on all of that because we think just as much as we're doing it we need feedback to know how we can grow how we can be better and so I was able to look at a lot of that feedback and think about what that means about uh, transparency for my position as well so everyone kind of knows the things that I'm doing um, and that I'm not making the decisions I have no vote I'm actually just enacting things <laughs> I'm just doing the things I promise you um and so you'll be able to see a lot of that in the recommendations from the various committees um, and, and what they decided. They did uh, recommend to offer me a, another three-year contract for this position. The board approved that. So you will have me for another three years. Hope that's okay with you all. <laughs> um, and so I'm really excited uh, to, to, to be working with um, REA. Clearly, I love this organization and I'm excited and I want to uphold the legacy and rich history. Um, and anything I can do, please send me an email. I feel like I always try to be available, but not too available because this is only kind of like a quarter time job. So I'm also trying to own boundaries with a four and a one-year-old as well um, to stay present, but I had a great year. Um, I'm looking forward to the next three and I'm looking forward to bringing Esther on board and working uh, closely with her uh, over the next year. So that is my report. Feel free if you want to read anything else, but questions, concerns. Thank you, uh, Lakeisha. Amazing, doing an amazing job. And just to remind everyone, given what Ann said in her presidential address, Lakeisha came on after Lucinda held the role for a really long time, had a lot more institutional support given where she was, a lot more historical knowledge. We made a bylaw change. So Lakeisha has been leading us through the both the governance change and COVID-19 and to the post-DC meeting follow-up that um, Ann was talking about has been leading through a lot of uh, changes at this time. So, you know, thank you. And had a baby. I mean, that's a big deal. So just throwing it out there. It's amazing. Um, we want to move on to the 2024 annual meeting. Um, Mary, did you, you're on uh, for this. Anything you want to say about this? I'm going to put the proposing um, a program theme link in the chat. Yeah, actually, um, I think both Dory and Wanda are here. I think that they should speak to it. Dory? Oh, no. Oh, the, oh, you, I'm oh, sorry. We'll talk talking, about the process first. You're talking about the process. Okay. Um, so, as was mentioned in Anne's um, plen uh, presidential uh, session, one of the governance changes is to was has been to um, set up a process by which individuals and teams can propose themes for our annual meeting, and um, those uh, proposals. There's a form on the website. Uh, look for the link that says proposing a program theme, you fill it out, that goes to the steering committee so they can vet them to at least make sure that they're um, a serious proposal. And if we get multiple proposals, then they will go out to the whole membership for a vote. Um, this year, we only had one proposal for this theme. And so fortunately, <laughs> Karen Marie's put together our wonderful um, program, but there may, and we have, uh, the board has already chosen one for the 2024 meeting, but for 2025, right, so now we're seeking proposals for 2025 um, themes, and 
in the November time frame where we do our fall gathering, we'll have a workshop that will talk to you about how to develop a program theme that will help you think about what's involved. And those, the deadline to make proposals is uh, January 1. Um, anybody can make a proposal. This is one of the things we're trying to do is make this process much more participatory and collegial. And it used to be in the previous version of REA that somebody got elected to be the program chair and then it was completely up to them with just a little bit of input from the board. This time we're really trying to make it something that the association can be involved with from the very beginning. Um, yeah. I don't wanna go on it such greatly, but if anybody wants to talk to me afterwards about it, I'm happy to talk with you about it. And as I said, we usually do a workshop during the fall gathering about how to go about making such a proposal. Thank you, Mary. And we, we've done um, now with Karen Marie and, and the year prior, we're starting to get our feet underneath us around how, what support looks like, what's the, what decisions need to be made and, and timelines and all that stuff. So you have, we have better understanding at the steering committee around what type of support we can offer and and what we can say, honestly, what decisions need to be made by when. So we encourage you all to um, to put a proposal together. And so now I'm excited to welcome Wanda and Dory to talk about what you all got for next year. Hi, everyone. Um, it's Dory here. Wanda and I decided that I would start and she would uh, take us home. Um, so can y'all hear me? Y'all are hearing me, right? Okay. Um, we're excited to be stepping up and offering the theme, Dear Earth, innovating religious education through the lens of climate justice. And the story behind the story here is that Wanda and I, we really didn't know each other that well before 2020. I mean, we bumped into each other, knew each other through REA, but during 2020 and in the aftermath of the pandemic, we discovered a shared passion around climate justice. For me, uh, coming out of, you know, the longstanding career focusing on young adults, I couldn't get past this being the single most important factor in the minds of the young people, the young adults that I know. So Wanda and I started reading books together and we started taking a walk and talk once a month, her in her woods, me in my woods, uh, not knowing where this was going to lead, but just knowing we had this shared passion. And out of that, we decided, hey, let's propose a theme. Part of the joy here is that we could do this together. This is the first time I think there will be co-chairs of a program um, bringing this together. Uh, that's a result of the new governance. And also that allowed us who are both like semi-retired, I'm in the last chapter of my career, uh, don't have you know institutional support. It allowed us to come forward and be creative anyway and offer this up anyway. And I think that bodes well for REA in the future and might mean that more independent scholars, more international scholars, more scholars that don't have institutional support will be able to come forward and offer a program theme because of the more widespread support that this new governance allows. So enough about that. I just wanna say one of my big hopes for the theme is that this doesn't, have, this doesn't have big papers and collaborative projects and poster sessions by people who are experts on climate justice. We really wanna shift this and make it, uh, the word lens come up here a lot. We want to invite papers and projects and conversations that invite people to share whatever it is they're learning and researching around all the multiple facets of climate justice, climate grief, climate despair, climate resilience, um, climate action, um, not from the lens of necessarily having expertise as cl in climate justice, but through the lens of having expertise as religious educators across our faith traditions and across the spectrum of practitioner and scholar. So what I hope you all will do after this meeting tonight is read the call to paper call for papers and then share it. Share it with people who you think might be interested in participating, whether or not they are inside religious organizations and institutions, um, whether they are doing the work with inside the institutions or whether they are like so many people in the climate justice world we know, doing spiritual formation, doing faith-based um, interrogation um, in climate justice, but not within religious institutions. So with that, I do wanna thank 
um, some of the folks in the fields who've inspired this, the folks in our field who've inspired that, particularly Jen Ayers and Randy Litchfield, and one of my mentors, Rosemary Radford Ruther, whose book, Women and Healing Earth, um, that book came out in 1996 and really helped me um, begin to listen to center the voices of women from the global south in the ecological discourse. So with that, I'll hand it over to Wanda. Can you bring it home for us? I think I can do that. Um, so um, a deep part of what um, has fueled this for us is our belief that our various faith traditions um, hold a number of resources for deepening resilience, um, for processing and metabolizing our grief and for fostering grounded ways of um, doing action for climate justice. Um, and we want this to be an opportunity that we explore the ways in which the deep wells of which we draw from um, can really um, inform and strengthen us as we navigate this crisis together. Um, and as Dory mentioned, um, so a lot of this work is happening in the fringes of our religious institutions, is happening outside of our religious institutions. We really want to draw upon all of these sources of wisdom. So um, invite you to really think very broadly um, about um, some of the places in which you see this work occurring, some of the things that you're experiencing personally that can lead to uh, a passion for some research that would um, come come before us uh, next year for our annual meeting. Um, we really want this to be an opportunity for um, all of us to learn from various disciplines and movements um, so that we can discern wisdom for our own ministries of um, education and formation. Um, so we also invite um, any of you who want to be um, engaging with us, even if it's just as a form of some conversation and of operate, offering some of your own perspective and wisdom. Um, we want to hold a, we are planning to hold a brainstorming session um, at the end of this month. Um, I see Dory already put her email in the chat and I'll put mine in the chat when I'm done yakking um, and would invite you to please be in touch with us if you want to be part of just that brainstorming conversation, we would love to have your input. Um, did I forget anything, Dory? I don't think so. I think that's it. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Dory and Wanda. This is, uh, I'm excited about this uh, conference. I'm also glad the way that you're leading. Um, Dory, uh, just mentioning your uh, note that's in here that the focus group to be involved and in, do that incredibly invitation. I, will say, I, do, I would like to say one more thing, um, Patrick, and that is just, we're glad that we knew that we knew well in advance that this would be a virtual meeting for this topic especially we feel like there's this really rare opportunity to have global participation uh grassroots participation participation of younger folks who would not be able to fund themselves to a to a in-person gathering you know we hold out hope that we can meet in person again in the future but for this one we were really grateful of the lead time it, it allowed us to step up and say yes knowing that it would be virtual. Thanks, Dory. I'm yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, thank you, Wanda, too. This is going to be great uh, next year. Can we get, I think we're ready to take a motion to uh, for this meeting. So I'm opening it up to the floor in the chat or speak it out loud. Um, I don't think I actually have a poll for this one. Can we just do the green checks or the... Um, Red ones under reactions. We got Karen Marie. I mean, I I'm think... assuming Eileen, is that a second ish? I mean, it actually hasn't the board already approved this, Patrick? You have to vote. I think that's yes, amazing. absolutely. That was a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Any conversation? All in favor, use your little check mark. All right, congratulations, Dory and Wanda, and everyone who's gonna help make this happen, uh, which should be everyone on the screen. Thank you, thank you, looking forward to it. <clears throat> uh, we have a bylaws update, Lakeisha. Yes, thank you. I, I will be quick because um, you should be able to see the, the bylaws, but it's essentially um, two things. One is um, 
there's a, it's a section for the standing committee and we just changed the language to say a minimum of that way committees can have more members. <laughs> um, so it was really just a small change, but we wanted them to feel empowered to have more members as they would like. Um, and the, um, the other one uh, for article uh, six, the section 2G, that one is a, a little bit more um, because it's essentially refining the publications chair and committee language. Um, oh yeah, so thank you Mary for the, the minimum of language. Um, and then the publications is actually um, sat down and had a conversation with the previous publications chair, I'll need to write, as well as the new one, Hoffman Ospino, and essentially just had a conversation about the change uh, because the incoming publications chair uh, is supposed to be helping with the annual meeting journal. But if this is when the change happens, it's really hard for the new person coming in to then have to automatically start working on a journal. <laughs> Um, and so essentially the language just adds a little bit more lead time and really talks about how they can help each other and, and whose responsibilities are what, just giving a lot more clarity so that people that are entering this position aren't already entering in an overwhelmed place of having to work on this journal just with them and Joyce. And so it's just giving a little bit more support based on the feedback from the publications chair and committee members. They wanted to really change some of this language that felt uh, more um, that felt more equitable for them as as, as chairs and, and committee members in this. So this comes from the people that have been publication previous chairs because this is some of their language. And again, that has already been approved by the board, but of course everything has to be approved by our membership. So the board brings this to you and those are the changes um, that we would like to, to enter into our bylaws that are highlighted in yellow. Thank you, Lakeisha. So we need a motion to approve the changes in the bylaw for these two. I have motion, Paulette. Paulette, can I get a second? Dr. Moon's son, second. Any discussion? Yes, I just wanted to, uh, uh, the notion of a publications committee overseeing all the publications goes back uh, 20, 25 years. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, uh, perhaps bring it to the board's attention that eReach, the uh, online newsletter, which comes out four times a year, is a publication. And it seems to me that publications committee should also uh, be uh, advised or directed to also overlook uh, eReach in terms of what it covers, how it covers it, and that kind of thing. So it's just a suggestion at this point, unless yeah. someone wants to move to actually include it in the, the change in the bylaws. Thank you for the uh, suggestion. We won't add that to this. I'm just gonna say, because part of the transition with Mary's uh, position that's coming up, and we'll talk a little bit about Esther taking that over and some of that work that, that's in that job description. Um, so we'll talk about that, but we'll take that um, suggestion under advisement. Um, I think we're ready to vote. So can we get um, your little check marks? Do you approve the change in the oh. bylaw? No abstain, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, because it's a, a bylaws change. Um, the full language on there. It, yeah, it, well, and it, and it needs to be anonymous. So that's why the poll is there. Great. While you're doing that, Noah, let me point out that eReach is listed on our website under publications. And we have um, a unanimous vote of yes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we want to spend a little bit of time. We only have 20 minutes left, uh, but we want to drop this Padlet in here. We need to take a moment to say thank you to Mary. I'm going to invite Lakeisha to say some stuff, sit, get on here on the microphone because it's you know evening for me. I cry a lot. So, um, Mary, thank you for everything that you've done. I mean, I'm I guess I'm starting. I just Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us and helping me, helping the steering committee uh, give history. I just, I'm so grateful. And just so the the members are aware, we did everything we could to strong arm Mary to stay longer. So, so 
this is we're we're sad to see you go and we're really grateful for everything you did i'm gonna open up the floor for anyone else who wants to say anything we have about five minutes uh, offer thanks gratitude for mary and there's oh there's padlet already down there I, so yeah mm, not gonna just thank you uh even just coming into this position position even before that you've just been just a light and a beam and just um yeah you you make doing this work with uh a joy even even in the midst of annual meetings when all the texts are flying behind the scenes and all the emails fly <laughs> um um you're still you and how you show up and how you allow me to show up as me I've always been very grateful for um yeah so I'm gonna leave it at that uh but also just know um her padlet is there please share gratitude uh and also I don't know Patrick do you want to talk about the other gift that we uh that we gave Mary so as an as an organization um we you know like to gift uh wanted to gift Mary something um, but we didn't want to gift her anything related because I don't know if you know, but Mary happens to like flowers and we secretly plotted with her, <laughs> with, with her family and found out they're working on gar doing some gardening, um, in their yard. And we thought what better way to give Mary a gift than to give her uh, a gift card to a place where she can plant things so she can look at something beautiful in her space instead of thinking about work, because, uh, she, I feel like she's planted so much for so many of us. <laughs> we thought that that was probably the best way to express our gratitude was to offer her something she could also plant and see beautiful and grow uh, in her space every day. So hopefully when you see that, you'll think of us <laughs> when you, when you're planting, when you're seeing it grow, that you'll, you'll think of us and you'll realize how much you've helped us grow uh, through so much and how much you've already planted um, and where, how there's so many of us that are in different places where you planted, you've been watering us, you've been doing, helping us bloom in so many ways. So um. That's all I got. It's already starting to tear. So thank you. Okay. Well, you're making me cry now. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick, enough already. You guys have been thanking me, thanking me, thanking me. Let's get to the rest of the meeting. Can't express enough gratitude. All right. Thank you. I've been, uh, folks, seriously, send her uh, email messages, drop in the chat, you know, say thank you. This has been, um, this has been a, a true uh, gift. So thank you, Mary. Um, one of the things that we did, we're going to be uh, transitioning. Uh, we did an open search for Mary's position. And we're thankful on this call. I think I saw it, Esther was on here. Um, we have an interim that's going to serve for a year to kind of fill the gap while we um, figure out what we need out of the networking coordinator. So Esther, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Um, take just a moment, say who you are, where you're at, and um, anything you want this this body to know about you? Um, hi, I yeah. Thank you, Mary. Once again, I know I have big shoes to fill, but um, I guess all of you will help me get through this too, and we will be a community um, working towards this. My name is Ezra. I'm coming in from South Korea. I did my doctorate at Knox College, University of Toronto. Finished it last year, and now I'm working at. Um, at a church as an international relations coordinator. Um, so I guess somewhat coordinating stuff would relate and I'm really excited to be here. Um, yeah, and really looking forward to being in this position. We're grateful to have you. I know the Lakeisha and Chris and Joyce are all excited to be working within the steering committee that's coming in. So thank you for saying yes. Again, I feel like we did, you know, trying to bring her on sooner and I'm just grateful that you said yes and, and are doing this work. So if uh, folks have uh, want to connect uh, with you, um, she starts in August, August 1, I believe is, is the right timing there. So information will be up on the website at that point, um, but we're looking forward to, to working with you. One of the things we did over this last uh, year was we did some staff evaluations, both of the networking coordinator um, for Mary's position and the executive secretary. We had committees that did that. Um, you can see the reports and recommendations there. Because we're low on time, you will uh, going to trust that you all can read that. Uh, Keisha, is there anything that you want to say out of either of these recommendations before we move on? Um, 
just that whenever recommendations do happen or feed, you get feedback, please, please fill it out. We, we really do take it. I really do see and hear all the things and we really do try to take into consideration because we're, we, we serve you all in the organization. So please uh, take the time and, and, and let us know genuinely what you're thinking, what you're feeling, even if it's not a feedback, if you want to send an email, um, it really does help us. So yeah, thank you. And that should reflect that in the, in the recommendations. That's great. And a reminder of the rhythm on the agenda here that we're voting. We voted for a vice president this year. Next year, we will be voting for a president. So we have an offset. So that way we always have overlap in the, uh, in the governance of the executive structure. Um, Lakeisha, one more time uh, the, before we get to the results um, on the renewal uh, committee for the website redesign. Yes. So um, as you all heard, we are, we're renewing the website. Um, as uh, Mary's Mary's goodbye gifts, right? I'm just uh, renewing the website. Um, Tenseg is is taking us through an amazing renewal, and part of it is they want your input um, because again, we we serve you. So how do you want our website our website to function? What do you need it to do so that we can more effectively be in community, so that we can move into this new space that we have entered? I feel like COVID changed a lot of things that are probably not going to go back. What do you need as people in the field that are practitioners, that are educators, that are doing the things that you're doing? What would be helpful? Come to this meeting. They would love to know your thoughts. They actually would love to have a committee of people that would love to work with them and like test out some of their things. And when they have a, a template to, 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 to try it out and to see what's working, to give them feedback. If that is you and you can't make it, put your name in the chat right now <laughs> so they can write it down. If you're able to make it, please come. Uh, it is tomorrow at and from 9 to 9.45 a.m. Eastern, Eastern time in the U.S. Um, again, if you're not able, put your name in the chat right now so we can take it down so that they can be in touch with you, um, if, if that's you. Um, again, you don't necessarily have to have all the tech experience. We just want you to care about like how you interface with us in our website. That's really what we want to know because we want this redesign to be done with you all and our membership and what's best for RE in mind. So please, please, name in the chat or show up. Great. Thank you all. And uh, last, uh, Lakeisha, would you like to do the uh, announcements of uh, the election? Yes, now that I cried, now I can do something fun. Okay, so <clears throat> in my best voice. So our announcement of our elected chairs and members based on our members voting, our vice president is Patricia Bonilla. Congratulations. Woo! Our recording secretary is Kisa Yang. Uh, our student representative is Yunjin Jun. Oh, I feel like I said it wrong. Please correct me. Say say it correctly, please. If I said Yun it wrong. Jun. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Paulus Cristiano is going to be our RE and Faith Communities Committee Chair. Our RE and Academic Disciplines and Institutions Committee Chair is Karen Reust. Our RE and Public Life and Global Community Chair member is Rafael Yabut. Our Harper Warnham Committee member, Tom Legrand. I feel like I just keep wanting to say Dr. Tom every time I see it now. Sorry. Um, and our Proposals Committee members, which are two spots, uh, is Heather Ingersoll and Patrick Reyes. So congratulations. Mm. Get out of here, Patrick. Congratulations. Uh, to you all, um, you will be receiving an email at about 9.31, uh, letting you know congratulations, as well as saying I will follow up with you um, in about, uh, after the annual meeting, I'll follow up with you with specifics around positioning, uh, around what you need, linking you with your committee and all of that stuff. So no worries. We are very, very, very excited. So congratulations to you all. Thank you all for choosing to be in leadership. Please continue to be in leadership. Yes, we're doing the work, but we need you to also do your part. We care about what you think, what you feel. You, you, you can do more than just a couple of us can do. So please continue to be a part of leadership. There will be another call for candidates that goes out around the fall gathering because we're on, you know, we try to offset every, like all the different positions. So there'll be more up if you didn't get a chance this time. Check out the call for candidates. Nominate yourself. Send me an email. We want you in leadership. We want to hear your voice. Okay, thanks. Thank you all. Congratulations, officers. It's good to see all of your faces. Love you all so much. I'm, I'm so grateful to be a part of this guild, and I've really meant it. I hope my kids, uh, well, maybe not religious educators. I want them to make money and take care of me when I'm uh, when I'm old. So, uh, But I would like them to be members. Uh, can we get a motion to close this one out? 
So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor, give me that thing. Or do we need to discuss the little green? No, do the little green things or wave your hands or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. We're adjourned. Enjoy tomorrow and um, grateful for everyone. We'll see you later.